so happy we alive. Yes, because Mass Network, Mass Network Times and Editor Sunday uh, uh, Magazine and, uh, has done a considerable amount of interesting reporting on this issue. In fact, some of the information, a lot of the information that I got for Chapter 6, which is about how the United States destroyed Colombia through forcing them into an unwinnable drug war, came from some of the reported models that Masson had done back in the 80s. So he knows the difference. He knows what's going on there. And yet the book that he wrote is basically an apology for the drug war. His position is it's totally screwed up. It's a disaster. It's unfair. Uh, and uh, it's not working on any level. But if we can just force everybody into treatment, we can take care of this. <laughs> and uh, so uh, the, the, uh, uh, what, uh, the review was then done by um, David Musto, who I quote extensively in the book. Musto was the source of the information. He's a Yale professor, medical historian, who's done uh, a tremendous amount of uh, uh, very thorough research into the origins of drug prohibition, a frightening story. So here's another guy that knows, absolutely knows the truth. And yet, uh, when he reviewed the two books, uh, the entire review was about Michael Massing's apology for the drug war. And he referred to drug crazy uh, in a single sentence, saying, unlike my phrase, drug crazy, which advocates total legalization. Michael Massey's work much more sensibly better than it was So uh, I had an opportunity to get even in the small sense. <laughs> when I debated Michael Massey at uh, Austin, uh, unfortunately uh, for both of us, the organizers of that event had put us in the same hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, had two rooms, separate bedrooms, but in this little suite that they had there. So he was embarrassed, uh, and uh, and uh, in that moment of embarrassment, asked me if I would uh, uh, do a, uh, a point counterpoint with him in the nation, because he had been commissioned somehow by the nation to do the definitive piece on the drug war. I said, sir, would be glad to. And then that evening, uh, we had a debate, and I'm sure you regretted making that offer. <laughs> um, because Massey's uh, uh, point is totally illogical. In other words, his statements did not uh, were, were unsupported by the facts. One idea did not connect with another. There was no assembly of uh, arguments building to a conclusion. It was just his opinion. He ran into this wonderful guy in New York, and, and as much as the book is about this guy in New York, who uh, is a uh, uh, marvelous street activist who's managed to get a bunch of people and certainly has saved a lot of lives uh, by getting people off of drugs and into treatment in New York. But I said, you know, this is not a policy model. This is not, you know, you, you can't count on finding enough of those guys to fix the drug war. I mean, where would we get them? And uh, apparently we hadn't thought. You know, we were just assuming that somehow we were going to get all of these people together. Uh, I then uh, engaged Sally's to tell how much, what do I got there? You got five minutes. Uh, I, I then engaged Sally's to tell, uh, who is uh, another man and woman, uh, who, who writes for the New York Times, and she is a therapist, I think, a psychiatrist, uh, who uh, uh, never writes for uh, the Wall Street Journal, very, very uh, supportive of the drug war. And uh, uh, it was a stunning revelation, once again, to realize that her statements were illogical, they didn't follow, uh, and, and raised to all kinds of, uh, as the libertarian she said, straw men, uh, accusing me of uh, advocating you know, crack vending machines in the school lunchroom and all that. And uh, at nowhere with her any, I mean, in other words, she was just inventing things that I had said. And yet, to the quick sense, it was on Salon Magazine on the internet, you could click back and see what I had said and so forth. So uh, I uh, retired from the field and said she was no longer interested in carrying on this dialogue. <laughs> um, the other problem is, of course, uh, what uh, Nick just mentioned here, Barry McCaffrey just makes it up. Yeah. You know, how do you defeat somebody who says to you, and I was, I was on that debate with the event, which was just before he went to, to Holland, and I had the foresight to uh, call the Dutch embassy the night before <laughs> and ask them to monitor the broadcast. So when the general started spouting these numbers about the Dutch murder rate being doubled by the United States, I said, hold oh, <laughs> general. <laughs> My understanding is that the Dutch embassy is watching this broadcast here because I had warned them that you might spin off into their Neverland on these numbers. And the, my understanding is that if you persist in this level of disinformation, they intend to uh, lodge a formal diplomatic complaint, which they did. They actually said that.
I guess that actually is all that kind of general whatsoever. <laughs> but as a Stockholm where he repeated this same nonsense, and at that point, Peter Cohen tells me that uh, Peter Cohen from, from Amsterdam uh, said that the Dutch foreign minister briefly considered borrowing General McCaffrey from the country. Uh, the Dutch, unfortunately for us, are too polite to do that sort of thing. <laughs> well, we can't really do that. We'll bring him here and we'll educate him. Of course, you can't educate somebody who is fundamentally lying to his teeth uh, for a specific purpose in order to maintain the propaganda effort of the federal government on the insane policy of prohibition of drugs. So we have our work cut out for us, but on the other hand, as Dick says, we're making headway. Thanks very much. just arrived uh, at FedEx at the front desk a few minutes ago. This is the paperback uh, version from Ralph Woods of Drug Crazy, which uh, will be out next month. It's, uh, the price is now uh, $14.95, which means that in quantity discounts, if you want to just buy them by the, you know, a box or something like that, you can probably get them for half that, I would guess, around $7 or $8 a piece. Thanks very much. Our next speaker is Dennis Kushan. He's a reporter at USA Today. Dennis is known for his groundbreaking reporting on the failure of care. He wrote a story in 1993 for the USA Today that um, was really the only of its kind. And in fact, it was such a rarity that the most censored stories book carried it in its top 10 list for that year. Um, he also uh, wrote one of the first stories on the um, racial disparities that are created by the uh, disparity in the crack powder um, cocaine laws. He's written pieces on um, how the law sends uh, deadheads to jail for incredibly small amounts of LSD. And in 1993, he won the HL Menken Award for an article on asset forfeiture. Dennis Kushan. And we're here to supervise this conversation. <laughs> I think I would be careful what you say. Actually, um, did, the, did, did the first story on Dick being named um, the the head of the head of Norman back in '92 or whenever it um, fit the mainstream media genre, Texas oil man named head of marijuana reform, <laughs> something like that. Dick had more hair. Than <laughs> that. Um, but I think that. Um, Dick's critique of the media is, is the mainstream media is quite insightful, but um, but I think I'm a little less harsh than him, I believe, because when you're in it, and some of your best friends, in fact, all of your best friends are those reporters that Dick um, is criticizing, you get a slightly different perspective. And the first thing I can testify is that there is no conspiracy. There is no um, prohibition on writing the type of stories or stories in a way that um, Dick would like to see him written or in, in other ways. It's, it doesn't harm your career, it hasn't harmed my career um, to write stories that y'all would consider sympathetic to you. It's, it's, it's really more of a technical thing, is that reporters don't go out so much and say what the truth is. They mostly say what people say the truth is. And that small technical distinction makes all the difference. And the people that we rely on for information are government sources. Or, or that, is a, that is a problem. Or mainstream um, interest groups or less mainstream interest groups. And groups flow into and out of the mainstream um, as public opinion moves. Whether it's a gay rights group, it's 30 years ago, it might not have been considered mainstream, but today is considered quite mainstream. Um, and if you look at the um, if you look at the types of stories that get reported and the way they get reported, um, I was thinking before of sort of breaking down the three major categories of marijuana stories that you'll see and which ones Keith Stroop might get a call to comment on normal. And I think it would probably only be one sort of on drug policy or marijuana.